Now, I know a number of you are probably saying, wait, but stress doesn't feel good, right? And oftentimes we experience stress under conditions where we're trying to learn or get good at something or listen better or do something, and it actually is diminishing performance. And I think it's important to acknowledge that. This study and studies like it are not saying that stress becomes pleasant as a sensation in the body, nor is it saying that it always leads to improved performance. I don't want you to think that's the take home message. Sometimes it does, it can, as was demonstrated in this research paper. But oftentimes, as we know, stress diminishes our performance. It takes us away from the landmarks we wanna hit. It takes us away from the grades we wanna get. It takes us away from, quote unquote, showing up how we want to, right? No one wants to have the blotchy skin and the sweating and the quaking of voice when we're trying to do public speaking and things of that sort. No one wants any of that. What's important to understand is that learning that stress is a way of mobilizing resources in the body does two things. First of all, it allows us to dampen or adjust the stress response in real time. And it allows us to understand that that stress response heightens our level of focus in a way that allows us to pay attention to the things that are going wrong in a way that allows us to make correction to those errors in the future. So if you think back to that study, that ERP study where they measured brain activity and they looked at people who had a fixed mindset versus people who had a growth mindset and the people who had a growth mindset were paying more cognitive attention to what was happening during errors and after errors. Well, this stress is enhancing mindset is very powerful because what it does is it shifts one's attention away from kind of somatic experience of, oh my goodness, my heart rate is elevated, I'm sweating, I'm quaking, I'm, I, just, I sound terrible, I feel terrible, I look terrible, et cetera, to a mode of allocating more of our thinking toward analyzing why things might be going wrong. And something else powerful happens when we embrace a stress is enhancing mindset as well. When we embrace a stress is enhancing mindset, it turns out that some of the very physiological processes that we call quote unquote stress shift in important ways. Some of those include the duration over which the stress hormone cortisol is released. And in fact, I don't even really want to call it a stress hormone because cortisol does so many other things as well. And it's not bad. You need cortisol. Believe me, you want cortisol, especially released early in the day and in response to acute stressors. What you don't want is for cortisol to stay elevated for long, long periods of time. And you especially don't want it to interfere with your sleep. Okay, so much so that I think uh, at times I wonder whether or not our philosophy on stress should be that stress is fantastic for us except when it interferes with our sleep, right? And when stress becomes terrible for us is when it starts to be chronically elevated and especially when it starts to inhibit our ability to sleep well enough and long enough. Okay, so the point here is that when we embrace a stress is enhancing mindset, we are able to have shorter duration release of cortisol. We are also able to engage what's called increased stroke volume under conditions of stress. This gets a little bit technical, but the amount of blood that your heart can pump with each beat turns out to be a key metric of stress. When we are very stressed, even though we need to mobilize a lot of resources, somewhat paradoxically, our total stroke volume can actually be reduced and we tend to shuttle blood and other resources towards the core of our body and towards major limbs and away from things like our brain and our periphery. So one of the key measures of how a stress response, quote unquote, is going is how much peripheral blood flow there is. And when we are more relaxed under conditions of stress, there tends to be more peripheral blood flow. When we are more anxious, more panicked under conditions of stress, peripheral blood flow is lower. And in a remarkable set of experiments, Ali Crum and colleagues have shown that when we are just taught that stress can be enhancing and then we are placed into a stressful environment, either because we are imagining stress or we are experiencing real stress and then our physiology is measured. What is observed is that the total amount of blood that the heart can pump with each beat is actually increased. Peripheral blood flow increases and our ability to maintain cognition, to think clearly under conditions of stress increases. And again, the only manipulation here is a tutorial about how stress can be enhancing, which is essentially what I'm telling you right now. In fact, for those of you that perhaps have heard stress reduces testosterone levels, stress reduces estrogen levels, et cetera, that's true. It is also true, by the way, that when you are informed about how stress can be enhancing of performance, it becomes anabolic. That's right. It actually can lead to deployment of androgens and estrogens, things that many, not all people desire to have increased or certainly desire to not have diminished below their normal baseline. So there's a lot of false stories out there about stress, not false because what you're hearing is wrong, because indeed chronic stress, chronically elevated cortisol can reduce testosterone, reduce estrogen, diminish sleep, diminish immunity, et cetera. But it is also true that stress under conditions where one believes that stress can be enhancing, can be anabolic, it can be pro-testosterone, pro-estrogen, it can be 
pro cortisol regulation in ways that allow you to focus your cognition and so on and so forth. Now that's exciting, but I do realize that for some people it might be sufficiently vague to make you wonder, well, how do I know if I'm getting the right response from stress or the wrong response? And the simple answer there is the more that you can learn about how stress can enhance performance and the more that you place yourself into safe, I want to underscore safe yet stressful adaptive circumstances. These are going to be circumstances where you stand to learn or grow in some positive way, not circumstances where you stand to hurt yourself or others, of course. The more that you can place yourself into conditions of stress and then to cognitively just tell yourself, ah, this elevated heart rate, this um, quaking of my hands, this you know sweating, et cetera, this is my body mobilizing resources. And the more that you can tell yourself that that's actually affording you an advantage in being able to allocate your attention to specific things, maybe why you made an error and analyzing that, or maybe why you succeeded at something and thinking about the steps that led to that success. The more that you can link that back to the processes that are taking you in the directions that you do and don't want to go and thinking about them, because indeed that's what stress can allow you to do. The more that you are shifting your mind away from thinking about just the raw, uncomfortable sensations of stress. You're putting a cognitive appraisal on a physiological process. You are thinking about stress in a way that is changing what that stress is doing. And you're taking your brain and body from a negative state, just to put a little bit of subjective valence on it, negative, right? Nobody wants to have the bad stress response to a positive state. And when you develop a stress as enhancing mindset, you not only are going to feel more comfortable under conditions of stress, but you are also developing the perfect tool to plug into the whole process of building up your growth mindset in a way that allows those two things, growth mindset and stress is enhancing mindset to synergize and to dramatically improve performance in the short and long term. And that's not just a statement that I'm making, that's what the research tells us.